Hi there, this is uh, another look at exercise 19c for uh, year 13 maths. Um, we saw last time that uh, we could use um, differentiation and integration um, when we have variable uh, acceleration. Uh, obviously when we have constant acceleration we use SUVAT. But when um, A is given in terms of T, so it might be for instance, it says that um, A equals T and 3 minus T squared or something like this. So notice it depends what the time is, um, if we're going to work out what the acceleration is. And in these situations, when we have a variable t um, a value for the acceleration, according to the, uh, the time, um, in those situations, we will uh, need to use differentiation and integration. But you'll notice here, we've got this big f equals ma equation written on the screen as well. And that's because we are going to use our knowledge of differentiation and integration with regard to the acceleration, the velocity and the displacement alongside f equals ma. The two can still be linked. They were linked when we did them first time um, and the, it's the a that links the two equations uh, or the two methods. But now of course we are looking at this um, just in terms of um, f equals ma as well. So uh, ff does equal ma then notice m is always a number like you know the mass of a uh, an object might be 12 kilograms but the other two things of effect that sometimes are in reliance underneath them um, also we're still using this idea that to go from x to v to a we differentiate but to go from a to v to x we uh, integrate and i remember saying to you last time if that's true don't forget the plus c um, so here's our first example. I think we've only got two or three examples. A particle of mass 2.4 kilograms, so straight away m equals 2.4, moves under the action of a constant force f. The constant force uh, implies to me that there's a constant acceleration, but um, that's uh, a bit counter to what I was just saying just now. But let, let's run through this. When t equals naught, the velocity of the particle is minus 2.5. And um, so let's just write it. So, when t, so that's almost like a u. I, I do think this is um, a SUVAC question. Having gone on about um, the fact that uh, this is um, differentiation and integration, it's just this word here, constant force. Um, and they've kind of given me a u. They say when t equals 4, uh, it's displacement, so um, so let's now do t equals 4, and its displacement is 16 minus 4. Find the vector f. So um, I think I need to find the um, the a. So I've got uh, an s is 16 minus 4. So that looks to me like s equals ut plus a half at squared. Obviously as vectors, so I've got 16 minus 4 equals minus 2, 5 times by the t plus a half of a times t squared, well that's 16. Um, so just doing some sums, that's um, 16 minus 4 equals minus 8, 20. A half of 16 is 8 plus 8a. Eight so it implies to me that a to a equals move that over gives me 24 minus 24 according to me. Divide them both by 8. a is 3 and minus 3. And of course we know that f equals ma. So that equals, what was the mass again? It was 2.4. Seems an odd number now since we've got such nice numbers here. So I think the force therefore is 7.2 and minus 7.2 newtons and it says the vector it doesn't say find the magnitude of the force so i think that's probably the answer yes it is okay so good um next question uh have we got any a particle moves under the action of two constant forces f1 and f2 particles acceleration is that find the value of p so um well if this is the case well f1 plus f2 must give me the overall resultant force so I'm going to say f equals um, and it's uh, p plus 2 and p plus minus 4p and 2p plus 1 which presumably then is minus 3p 
plus the 2, and 3p plus 1. That's my force. It says the particle's acceleration is 4j. So m is, oh sorry, f equals ma. So, and it moves under two constant forces. And the particle's acceleration is 4j. Um, oh, I see. Um, it's It says the particle's acceleration is 4j. So that basically, I mean, I don't think I'm going to use f equals ma here. It's a is um, 0 and 4j. And you're, what that means is, well, I don't need the j. What am I doing? What that means is this thing equals 0 and this thing equals 4. Actually, not even that's true. What it is, because f equals ma, then I suppose technically m times a equals minus 3p plus 2. And that must equal, by definition, because the acceleration is zero, then m times by zero is minus 3p plus 2. And the critical thing about that is m times by zero is still zero. So we can use that equation and set it equal to zero. So solving that, I get 3p equals 2, p equals 2 thirds. Now the other equation is not quite so useful. It's still valid, but it's not anywhere near as useful because, again, m times by the a is equal to 3p plus 1. Um, but my a here is 4, but my m at this stage is unknown. Um, 3p plus 1. Now, as, actually, as it happens, I've just calculated what p is. So if the question had asked for it, it allows me, I suppose, to calculate what the m must be, the mass of this particle. Um, it, it doesn't allow me to find what p is. The first equation does that. But the second equation actually does more than perhaps they um, wanted me to do. Because I can now say that 4m equals, what's 3 times 2 thirds? Well, that's 2, plus 1 is 3. So I now know, even though it didn't ask for it, um, that the mass must be 3 quarters of a kilogram. Um, well, yeah, p equals 2 thirds. So that's all they wanted on this question. But I was actually able to, I th well, I think I've done it right, to work out the mass as well. Another question, uh, a particle of mass 0 0.5, so again, quickly write m equals 0 0.5, starts from rest and moves under the action of the force. Ah, now look, this one is a variable force, 4t and 2t minus 2. Perhaps this is more like the one I was hinting at the start of the video, I was expecting to see. But because I've got the force, I can therefore find the a because f equals ma and by definition if i want to find the a i can simply divide by the mass and it'll give me the a so a equals 4t and 2t minus 2 divided by whatever that mass was which was 0 0.5 and of course dividing by 0 0.5 doubles it so therefore a is effectively 8t and 4t minus 4 so i now know what the acceleration is What's it after? Find the speed. Well, that implies I need the velocity. Velocity is the integral of a dt. So if I integrate this, I get 8t squared over 2, which is 4t squared. And I get 4t squared over 2, that's 2t squared, minus 4t, plus a constant vector. So um, what's it? it starts from rest starts from rest and move so what's that that means t equals zero when v equals zero and these are great these because if i put zero into here i get zero and that's already zero this is a zero vector i suppose technically it's like that so therefore zero zero equals this lot which is zero zero when i put zero into that i get plus a constant so you can see the constant is zero um, notice that's the zero vector. So if that's the case, I can simply write v equals this thing here, 4t squared, 2t squared minus 4t. Uh, and there's no constant to worry about. And find the speed and direction of the particle after three seconds. Oh, um, yeah, and the direction. And I've already said that you, in order to find the direction, you must use the velocity vector to do that, as well as Pythagoras will help find the speed. So let's chuck 3 in. When t equals 3, v equals 
Well, that's 9, that's 36. And when 3 goes in there, that's 9, 18, minus 12, I reckon 6. And of course that, let's draw it over here. That is 36 across, and then the little 6 up. There you go, so that's what we're after. I want that direction, and that's magnitude. So the speed is the square root 36 squared plus 6 squared. Uh, there's my calculator. 36 squared plus 6 squared equals square root the answer. I get 36.5 meters per second. And the direction, which I'm going to call alpha, is the inverse tan of 6 divided by 36. And uh, the in, oh, I'll make sure I'm in degrees. I, yeah, I need really to be in degrees. I suspect it's going to give the answer in degrees. So the inverse tan of 6 divided by 36, close bracket, equals, I get 9.46 degrees. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And that's the end of the um, PowerPoint. So um, a relatively quick one. Now, of course, after me saying at the start it was all about differentiation and integration, it's, they threw in a couple of SUVAT questions. Um, uh, so just be aware of that. We look out for that word constant, constant force, constant acceleration. That tells you it's ex um, you can use SUVAT. If you look, if you get given an acceleration as a vector in terms of t, that tells you it's not constant. It changes with time. And therefore, we have to use um, this idea of differentiation and integration. But that was quite a nice little short lesson. We're, our aim is to finish 19C within this next hour. Cheers, guys.